week I was able to watch one of my most anticipated movies of the fall, Knives Out at Fantastic Fest. So let's talk about it. When a rich author suddenly dies, his entire family gathers together. Meanwhile, a world-class detective shows up to investigate what happened. Knives Out is a quirky whodunit from Ryan Johnson of Last Jedi in Looper fame. Real quick, before I get started, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Are you excited to see this one? Yes or no? Also, what is your favorite whodunit murder mystery? With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And the first thing I absolutely loved about this film is that it really is a modern day who done it. It has all of the twists, turns, reveals, and detective work that you want in a film like this, but it still feels like something new, a new take on a classic genre. The way the mystery inside of it is structured is that it's not a single mystery. It's not just about the who done it. There's a whole bunch of different mysteries inside of it that are layered on top of each other. The movie has a big twist to reveal about every 30 minutes inside of the film, which kind of restructures the way you saw what was what came before and changes the trajectory moving forward. It keeps rewriting the type of film that you're watching and the way you interpret everything around you. Within the first 20 or 30 minutes, there's a huge reveal. I was not expecting them to give us this much of the narrative that early inside of the film. Another good thing here is that the trailers thus far haven't really given you any clue of where this narrative goes throughout the course of the film. They give you the setup of the first 20-ish minutes of the film and they give you some of the jokes and scenes, just kind of images from later in the film, but they haven't given away any of the twists, turns, or anything like that. And of course with this film you have to talk about the cast. Ana de Armas is probably our lead character here. We're mostly following her and her perspective throughout the film. She's written to be kind of the straight man inside of the story. She's not one of the more flamboyant characters but she does a good job of kind of anchoring the film a little bit and give you the normal person inside of this world of quirky characters. Our other primary lead is Daniel Craig as the private investigator or detective who's been hired to try and figure out what is going on with this family. It is such a fun, odd performance, especially because we're so used to seeing him as Bond, and he is just having a ball going for it with this role. He's funny, he's weird, he's all the things you want him to be, and when he needs to be the guy that pulls things together, he can be that too. Just such a great change of direction for him. And then you have this ensemble of great actors playing the family inside of this film. They're all fun, they're all lively. Some of the standouts were Michael Shannon, Chris Evans and then Tawny Collette. Chris Evans in particular does a very different type of performance. It's a much more snarky Chris Evans. It's a lot more Johnny Storm than Steve Rogers. So he can be quite funny in this role because he's being such a jerk at certain points in time in the film and it's fun to see him get to do that. But really all of the actors have a moment where they get to steal the scene, deliver some hilarious line or just do something very memorable inside of the film. A couple of the people weren't as prominent as I thought they would be originally. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in particular seemed to be a little bit more held back than some of the other actors. She didn't get quite as much screen time or as many memorable moments. And then Jaden Martel, young Bill from the It movies, he's pretty small role inside of the film. There's lines of dialogues cracking jokes about his character, but he has very limited screen time inside of the film. Not that they do a bad job, they're just not as prominent or showcased inside of the film. And then this is a movie that is very funny, it's very quirky, it's very odd. Whether it's just the wordplay and the dialogue being structured in such a way that it always feels really sharp and smart. The characters are all written with these new nuances and oddities that just make all of them pop. You want to see more of all of them because they're made in such a way that they have such a distinct flavor to them that makes you want to have more of it. There's also all these great moments where there's juxtaposition between all of these murder mystery tropes, whether you've got the mansion, the family coming together, the detective, the investigator who has the southern drawl juxtaposed with a bunch 
bunch of very relevant pop culture references in a way that it just catches you off guard as they just say things that are just so 2019 and then they do something that's so true to the genre that in and of itself that scenario is funny. And then you just got to talk about Ryan Johnson's ability to masterfully keep the tone in check as well as keep the story from unraveling and going out of control. You always are paying attention to what you're supposed to be paying attention to. You know the things that you need to know. And when the reveals happen, he doesn't have to over explain things. You remember things from the past. So he just has to say how the pieces fit together in the information we didn't have. Likewise, it can balance very nicely being a murder mystery, a who done it, a what's going on with the very quirky sense of humor throughout the entire film. With so many characters, with so many plot lines, with so much humor being thrown at the screen, it'd be very easy for the film to just kind of get go out of control all over the place, but he very masterfully keeps it all in check. He is in absolute control of the narrative that he wants to tell and the style in which he wants to tell it. And this is a film that has a very unique, distinct style to it. With that said, let's move on to the negative. To be perfectly honest, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. So I'm gonna mention a couple of things that I did notice, but they didn't really detract all that much from my enjoyment of the film. First off, there's at least one of the twist reveals that I saw coming about 10 miles away. There's a bunch I didn't see coming in advance, but there was one really big one that as soon as they started heading in a specific direction, I was like, okay, I see exactly where this is headed. Second issue, as you kind of get the final answers for the film, it gets a little bit convoluted in just how many layers there are to the story and everything that was going on. I was like, nah, maybe that's a little bit too much going on here. And if you like a murder mystery where you could be able to figure everything out there's a few things that you couldn't piece together with this film with the information that they give you in the first 90 percent of the film but like i said i loved this movie these are very minor things that i'm mentioning real quick before i give you my final take on this one remember to tell me down below in the comment section what is your favorite murder mystery who done it also after this video if you want to find out some of my takes on the other films that i saw at fantastic fest you can check that out at this playlist up above with knives out they found a way to make an incredibly fun film that provides everything that you want from this genre while also still feeling fresh and new. It's an A- minus overall. It's a 9 out of 10 on the entertainment scale and this is one I definitely think that you should check out. If you want more of my coverage from Fantastic Fest, check out that playlist right over there. I've reviewed some of the bigger movies from the festival as well, some of the smaller films as well. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.